like GIF and, and, and JIF. Some say it's pronounced sigil, others say it's pronounced sigil. And, and don't get me started with the wilder ways that some folks say it. I mean, uh, even sigil. I mean, even the creator of Planescape, Zeb Cook, teases on how to pronounce it. Game Masters here, and while we argue about how to pronounce Sigil, I wanted to show you some of you uh, the, the character options found in the new Planescape setting. There is the Gate Warden and the Planar Philosopher. The Gate Warden, as the name implies, is heavily associated with Planar Gates. Okay, breaks down like this. You grew up in and around a portal that leads to another place of existence. As such, that other plane's energies has seeped into your town, granting its inhabitants and, and yourself with a touch of that plane's energy. For example, if you grew up in and around the portal that leads to the evil outer plane, you might have damage resistance to necrotic damage, and you might innately know the cantrip chill touch. That is all part of their feature called planar infusion, in which you gain the scion of the order plane's feet. You'll also know where in your hometown uh, to find free or, or, or modest uh, lodging and food. The planar philosopher seeks to understand the nature of the planes, or at least they suspect that there is an underlying meaning and truth to the multiverse. Factions are a big part of the planar philosopher's journey, and you can draw strength from being a part of a faction. And we covered the ascendant factions in a previous video, so I'm not going to go into them here, but one of the features of the planar philosopher is called conviction, in which you gain the feat scion of the outer planes, and is the same feature that the gate warden has, in that you will have a connection to an outer plane. Again, for example, the lawful outer plane will grant to you damage resistance to force damage and you will innately know the cantrip guidance. Before we explore the new feats found in this Planescape setting, I want to thank these Scion supporters for their contributions to this channel. It gives me the freedom to not have to take on sponsored ads, which we all skip anyway, and for that we all need to thank them. If you'd like to see how you can support this channel, give it a thumbs up, but then check out the link down below in the description on how to become a Patreon or YouTube member and you'll have my eternal thanks. As for feats, each one will see an ability score of their choice increased up by, by one up to a maximum of 20, except for the Planar Wanderer, but we'll get to that one in a moment. The Agent of Order can also perform Stasis Strike, in which you will damage a creature. Uh, you can deal an extra 1d8 force damage to it and possibly bind it with some spectral well, bindings and restrain it. The Baleful Scion, once per turn, when you damage a creature, you can deal necrotic damage to it, which does 1d6 plus your proficiency bonus, plus you regain a number of hit points equal to the amount of damage uh, of necrotic damage that you just dealt. The Cohort of Chaos, when you roll a 1 or a 20 on an attack roll or, or a saving throw, chaos flows through you. You roll a d4 on the Chaotic Flares table to see what happens. You might be able to instead give a creature advantage on their attack rolls, but disadvantage on their ability checks. Or you may find that there is a whirlwind swirling around you that uh, all creatures in that area have disadvantage on their wisdom saving throws. The Outland Envoy grants to you the Misty Step and Tongue spells, allowing you to cast each one without needing a spell slot. Misty Step allows you to teleport to an unoccupied area about 30 feet away, and the Tongue spell lets you understand a creature's spoken language. The Righteous Heritor allows you to use your reaction to soothe pain. Uh, you can reduce damage caused by uh, 1d10 plus your proficiency bonus. And the Planar Wanderer. And remember, this is the only one that cannot increase a stat of their choice by one. The Planar Wanderer grants you resistance to either acid, cold, or fire damage when you finish a long rest. But you can change that after you take another long rest. Plus you have Portal Cracker. No, this isn't like a cheese it It's an action that you can concentrate on. Uh, a portal that's in front of you while making a DC 20 arcana check. On a failed check, you take 3d8 psychic damage, but on a success, you can force that portal to open or close for one hour. Plus, you have Portal Sense, which grants you the knowledge of the direction of the last planar portal you use, provided you're on the same plane of existence as that portal. Moreover, as an action, you can detect the location of any portals within 30 feet of you that are not behind total cover. And that's it. For character options. Two new backgrounds and a few new feats. But I do want to offer this up, which may seem a bit out of context since we're not really talking about the adventure itself, uh, Turn of Fortune's Wheel. But everything that we've just covered is going to come in super handy should you choose to delve into that adventure. 
That's a little bit of a spoiler, but trust me. Earlier, I also mentioned that we previously did a video covering the Ascendant factions, and if you'd like to check that out, you can watch that video here. But also be sure to check out my Planescape playlist here. It's only going to grow as I add more videos. What is your favorite feat from, uh, from the ones in this new book? Let me know down in the comments, and until next our paths cross, may you not fall into the wrong portal.